Welcome to the channel viewers, Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist. It's quarter six in the a.m. Usually I'm down on the northern beaches, um, central, uh, northern beaches, New South Wales, Australia. <clears throat> Just getting in the pool to do some exercise. I thought I'd let you join me. that way um, it just shows you that you've got to be consistent <clears throat> this is only light rehabilitative exercise due to a serious ankle injury I sustained when I was married to a covert narcissistic wife who didn't turn up to a walk we were going to have together she decided that she'll just forget about that without telling anybody and go and buy a dress that's how they work. Once they marry you, they change. And um, consequently, I had a serious accident under the anxiety of it all. Put off my attention, put off my concentration. Um, I knew something wasn't right in my psyche because I didn't perform very well when I was kiting so I come in I deliberately decided to come in by way of um, a lack of um, combination I guess you'd call it and in my body just wasn't sinking in, in sync come in and um, just had an accident by microincremental loss of thought and that's what covert narcissists can do to you once they go overt. You don't know at first that any of this is happening. If you've got no understanding of how uh, narcissism works in its devaluation stage, then you don't understand that the person is going into a state of devaluation and then dis well disintegration and then discard it was a, it was a horrendous journey it was the ruin of something that i take really serious marriage and i just found myself at the mercy of a degenerate um, a very well presented one a very selfish one um, a very costly one both physically mentally and financially um, and these things are real it's not a joke uh, and that's how it is I was with another woman where we got engaged and she wouldn't wear the ring I don't know why um, what, <laughs> why you'd want to get engaged and not wear the ring but no, nah, not this woman so I let her, I let her go with, um, with a couple of other things as well. And these people aren't bad people because you wouldn't get close to them if they were. They've just got traits that sabotage their lives and they sabotage their lives for their entirety. It's a matter of them being able to find someone that will tolerate their dysfunctions, their destructiveness. And I got to a stage in life where I learned <clears throat> about narcissism as a, I knew what these behaviours were, but I didn't know that narcissism and the sinful nature and all these other things that wreck things for people um, had names until I met a woman who had a golden child who was just preposterous, absolutely preposterous. And he was the missing link. He was the one that put it all together for me, way back to a female narcissist that I had 20 years ago. They all, everything just clicked together after this experience because I actually watched this woman try and dodge it she wouldn't deal with it. 
She was trying to dodge it, what I call dodge it. And the dodging it wasn't fixing it. And so while I was being tolerant, trying to be tolerant, as tolerant as I could be, knowing that this malignant narcissist was working in the background against the relationship. And I kind of felt sorry for this woman because she'd seen the light. She'd been in the darkness for a very long time. Um, she'd seen the light. The relationship was, we never fought. Um, and that's the funny thing about all these women. We never fought, but you can only tolerate so much. So, um, you just get to the stage where your tolerance and you become more sensitive to trauma because you can be tolerant but still be going into trauma under the stress of unresolved. This is what people don't understand. Many people are traumatized and they don't even know it. They've got mental and physical ailments that um, they live with. They suffer, suffer from all sorts of sicknesses and ailments, um, mental and physical, which wear at them. And they, they just think it's age or it's normal part of life. It's not. It's abuse. They're being abused. So many people have got sicknesses and illnesses and health issues that they ought not to have. But they couldn't identify them with what was happening within their intimate relationship. They couldn't identify that these problems were coming from the dysfunctions and deliberate aggravations and frustrations of people who were working in their sinful nature. And it takes a toll, it takes a toll. Now put these people, some people put up with it for the whole of their lives. They live miserable lives. They spend five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years with these people only to realize that they just were never ever going to make it. They were never ever going to make it. They were never going to make it in the relationship. And so how do you add all that up? The problem with it, well, the way you add it up is it comes through stress. As the stress and pressures and failures and the issues and um, things that are going on in the relationship build and require resolve, these people will go without the resolve and wing it or fake it until the other person just can't take any more. And that may not be deliberate. That may not necessarily be deliberate. It may just be a, um, it's a formation. It's a domestic characteristical circumstantial formation in their psyche that's caused them to end up this way. And when you end up with somebody like this, female and male, because it's 50-50 now. It used to be mainly male, but now it's up to 50% apparently for females as well. Um, that's where all the trouble starts. And the difference, well, what happens is you don't see it at first. That's why it's covert. But as time goes by, as things start to happen, it becomes overt and things start to happen that you go, hang on a sec, that's not in character with the person I know. That doesn't seem to be in sync with the person that I know. And unfortunately it is, it just hasn't manifested. This is the way a lot of these people's lives um, unfold. The longer they're with you, the worse it gets. 
And that doesn't mean you're not going to have great times and good times and get to know each other well and understand each other more. It's just an inevitable consequence of how the nature and psyche of humanity can be. Because even when you split up with these people, they'll start the cycle again and it'll all look wonderful on the surface. But underneath, those same sabotaging character traits will be at work. And they'll work against the next relationship. And one of the worst ones is when it's triangulation, which I speak a lot about, because triangulation is a situation where you're usually dependent on the person that you're with to resolve it. And if they're not going to resolve it, you'll get the blame, you'll be the problem. Um, the two people in the triangulation, be it mother and children or the partner and another person, could even be partner and friends or partner and an extra, you know, outside affair type thing, you'll get the blame. You will get the blame. That's inevitable. So as you learn these things and how they work and what they do and how it happens, um, that's when you act fast and you go, no, I won't be hanging around any further for this. I don't want to deal with the trauma because the trauma can take months and years to heal from. It's very, very deep and you need, when you see things that are starting to test your patience and tolerance, to act fast and get out.